I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of Matthew, in Matthew chapter 16. Now, this particular passage of Scripture, uh, some of you will recognize as the place where Peter makes his confession, and Jesus says, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The confession that Peter made was that Jesus was the Christ. Now, that's a very significant thing. We have to understand that when, uh, when Peter made this particular statement, he wasn't just spouting off what uh, he wanted Jesus to hear, but rather he was speaking of the conviction of his heart. Now, in that particular time, there were others who claimed to be the Messiah, the Christ, but Peter was saying, Jesus, you are that one. We have seen your miracles, we have listened to your teaching, we have watched your baptism, we have seen all of those things that have, that have come upon this world because you're here. And we therefore recognize that, that you are the Christ. Now, what I would like to focus on, that's, that's important and necessary for us as individuals as well, Later, John, said, John will write in his book that the things, the events of Jesus' life that he records there in John's gospel are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. That's what Peter's confessing in Matthew 16. But that you may believe that he is the Christ and that by believing you may have life in his name. So all of us need to come to that particular place where we recognize that Peter's confession is our own confession, and we need to say to Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But what I find very interesting here is in verse 17. In that particular passage, it says that Jesus responds to Peter by saying, Blessed are you, Simon, the son of John, because flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. Now hold on for that a moment. We think that it's because of our cognitive rationalism or perhaps some experience that we've had that we have acknowledged Jesus as the Christ. But in reality, it's because the Father of our souls and our lives, the Creator, has come and he has revealed to us who Jesus is. Now that's very significant. First of all, it, it prevents us from being um, arrogant and imagining that it's something in us and, and because of us. It keeps us from pulling on our lapels to say, look how good I am. It's that God himself has given to us the proper understanding. In many ways, he has ordained the circumstances that would bring you and me to the place where we would recognize that Jesus was the Messiah. He's the one predicted from the foundation of the world, and he is the one before whom every creature one day will kneel in obeisance we must recognize that this comes from God himself. He's the one that has worked in us. There's an old hymn that, we've never, that we never sing anymore. And in this particular song, it says that I sought the Lord and afterward I knew that it was not me that was seeking him, but it was he that was seeking me. Now, I didn't uh, I, I'm not as eloquent as the songwriter and the poet that put that together. But that's the essence of what this particular writer has had said. That it's not us that are seeking him, but he's the one that's seeking us. And that puts a whole new perspective on our Christian faith. You remember in John 4, when Jesus is with the woman at the well, he says, that, uh, he says that the worshipers that God seeks are the ones who worship in spirit and in truth. For such people 
the Father seeks to be his worshipers. He wants us. He longs for us. He longs for truth and integrity in the inner part. That's what David says in Psalm 51. That's what Jesus is alluding to before the woman at the well. And that's what this particular passage in Matthew 6, Matthew 16 is all about, that God is looking for those who will, in the integrity of their hearts, embrace Jesus as the Messiah. And if you'll do that, as John will later say, you will have life in his name. And that's what Peter is acknowledging at that particular time. Now, in the development of the disciples and in their discipleship, if you will, they are just at that point where they're starting to recognize who he is. You and I, in, on this side of the cross, perhaps have already recognized that. But the bottom line is that in order for us to have life, we have to come to that position. And he is seeking you. Father, we thank you that you are, in the words of another poet, the hound of heaven. You are looking for us. You are searching for us. You're seeking that we might have life and come to know you. And we praise you and we honor you. And we pray, Father, that you would help us to be discerning and know that we can't pull the wool over your eyes, but that we have to be honest in the quietness of our hearts. Help us to do just that. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.